the all-new Hubitat Elevation Smart Hub. A lot of power and a little package. This little gem features built-in Z-Wave and Zigbee while also supporting the Lutron Smart Bridge. What's not to like? Well, that's what we're going to find out. Let's uh, turn the upstairs hall light on. Stay tuned. Hi again, John Stone, the DIY Smart Home Guy on the channel that's all about providing tips, tricks, and reviews for your affordable smart home. To cloud or not to cloud, that is the question. If you've spent any time on my channel, you know exactly where I stand. The last 12 months have deepened my belief in local control. Three prolonged internet outages, one of which while we're out of town. Also, Stringify has announced that they're shutting the doors to the public to focus on their commitments to Comcast. This leaves me and frankly a lot of other people racing to find new solutions for automations that we relied on Stringify for. As I weighed my options, I came back to my core criteria for a smart home. I want to ensure that my smart home experience is as fast as possible. I want it to be available even when my internet goes out. It doesn't happen often, but when it does, I want my smart home to stay smart and I want it to function like a normal house for family and guests. I had to sit up and take notice when the Hubitat Elevation was released since it brands itself around the local control experience. Hubitat carries all the normal Z-Wave and Zigbee capabilities and it works with the Echo and Google Assistant. And just like SmartThings, Hubitat allows you to incorporate your own apps and drivers, but with the Hubitat, all these run local, which does mean better performance. When I say local, this means that all your data stays local and private, and it works without the internet, except of course if you have cloud integrated products. With the Hubitat, you can perform your own backups and you're in control of when the hub is updated. Having been a victim of forced hub updates on other platforms, this is pretty important to me. I got pretty excited about the Hubitat for a few reasons. One of course was the local control, and the other one was that it boasted support for the Lutron devices. And before you go thinking I'm making a buck off the Hubitat, this video is not a paid endorsement and I receive no compensation for making this video. All product links in the description below are affiliate links and I may receive commissions if you purchase products from these links. Some products shown in the video were provided to me for free from the manufacturer. However, this video should not be considered an endorsement for any of these products. So let's open this bad boy up. It's like Christmas. Oh yeah, look at this. We open, 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 open. Inside the box, you'll find a detailed instruction manual. Underneath, you'll find the hub. Yes, this is the hub. Open the flap to reveal the power cord and under the hub is an ethernet cable. For a home automation hub, this thing is small. Hold on. But don't let the size fool you. It packs a lot of power. Some of you may be familiar with the original Hubitat. The previous version was pretty small and required an external USB stick for Z-Wave communications. It looked like somebody miniaturized a Raspberry Pi and, well, stuck a Z-Wave USB stick in it. So, at the time, I was ignoring it. Well, I finally decided to pull my head out of my butt and give it a shot. I mean, what the heck, I already have a Wink Hub 2, SmartThings, and Vera Secure. I might as well educate myself and others about this product, right? When my unit arrived, I was pleased to see that the Z-Wave USB stick was a thing of the past. The new unit is this very compact 3 inch by 3 inch square box that sits about 3 quarters of an inch high. There are only two ports on the unit, which include a micro USB power plug and the Ethernet port. On the front, you'll find a single indicator light that provides color-coded statuses. In the end, it really isn't that much to look at. Other than the fact that it's really sexy. <whistles> the hub retails for $149, but as of the making of this video, you can find it on sale for $99 on Amazon and for $89 on sale on the Hubitat website. You'll find a link for this and other products in the description below. Another thing that caught my eye is that this is available in several versions for several countries. Top of my list was Thailand. If you remember my first Stringify video, I shot that while I was on vacation in Thailand with the family. We plan to make our Thailand house smart. So again, you have my attention, Habitat. Oh, and Chris, in case you didn't notice, this thing supports Australia. You got to check that out. Let's stop with all this Thailand nonsense and get back to the video, please. <laughs> Sorry about that. One thing that should be obvious is a lack of battery backup. If you plan to use your smart home hub as your security system, you'll need to come up with some sort of a battery backup solution. But given the fact that this thing runs from a 5 volt USB source, coming up with a clever solution shouldn't be that difficult. My research shows that the Hubitat supports a wide range of devices. 
and you can find a list on their website, which I found to be very helpful. You'll also find loads of custom handlers developed by third parties on the Hubitat forums. And since you're headed that way anyway, don't forget to click that subscribe button and don't forget to spank that bell icon for future live broadcasts. One of the first things that you're going to notice is just how freaking fast this thing is. In this side by side, you can see just how fast controlling this light is. And this is with 80 some odd devices loaded into the hub. This thing is fast. I mean, look, that is almost instantaneously. When it comes to Lutron support, Hubitat supports that as well. And it's local, but there is a catch. Local control for Lutron is something that only the Wink Hub has provided for a number of years since it has built in 430 megahertz radio. So for the Wink Hub, it's Lutron yes and local yes. While Samsung SmartThings does support Casita devices, it's accomplished only with the Casita Smart Bridge and the integration is in the cloud. The Lutron Bridge is basically how normal humans like you and me link it into Casita devices when they don't have a Wink Hub. So for SmartThings, it's Lutron yes, local no. The situation is a little better with the Hubitat. Unfortunately, you still need the bridge. The good news is that Hubitat uses a local Telnet protocol to access the Lutron bridge directly. So you do still have local control. And yes, it's lightning fast as well. So for Hubitat, it's Lutron yes, local yes, at the cost of an extra Benjamin. So if you're planning to switch from a Wink Hub, you'll need to shell out another 100 bucks to get all your Lutron Caseta devices working within the Hubitat. But if you're coming from smart things, then you're probably already invested in things like this, so it might not be that big of a deal. With that, let's get into the software. My original intention was to only test a few devices and just play around for a little bit. But the more I used this little beast, the more excited I got, and I just kept going until I had nearly my entire house inside the Hubitat. This ended up being a total of 80 plus devices, 30 automations, and a dozen or so dashboards. I'm going to warn you, switching to the Hubitat was a bit of an emotional roller coaster with high highs and low lows. You don't need to tell me more about these emotions. The first low point that you hit is the fact that there's no iPhone or Android app. It was supposed to be released in April of 2019, but as of the time I made this video, I haven't seen it yet. The latest information that I can find is that the app is still in beta test, so I really can't even tell you what kind of features it's going to have. While I would like to have a mobile app, the web interface is factored for mobile devices and it's really not too bad. Um, it's not the greatest thing in the world, but you can get into this and have access to your dashboards. You can get in and look at all of your devices. It is a little clunky when things scroll off to the right, but for the most part, you know, it's not too bad. I also got this running on my Kindle Fire, and again, it seems to work just fine for us normal humans anyway. You should also be aware that all configurations must be performed on your local network, except for the dashboards, which we'll talk about in a minute. And when I say configurations, I'm talking about adjusting scenes, building rules, and robots, and whatever you're accustomed to doing from your phone while you're on the road. This means you can only work on your system from inside your house, or use a screen sharing software like TeamViewer. On the plus side, the setup is super simple. It literally takes about five minutes. I left a link to this setup video below. Oh, and here's a pro tip. When you first get your Hubitat set up, make sure you give it a dedicated IP address with your router. It'll save you a lot of headaches down the road. Naturally, once the hub is all set up, you're gonna to wanna to bring in devices. And here was another downer for me. Remember when we looked at the size of this thing? Well, one thing that appears to be missing is a robust antenna. I say this because unless I had the hub within 10 to 15 feet of a device, I couldn't get it to pair, and this stayed true for every single device. And since the hub doesn't support Wi-Fi, I had to plug in a 50-foot Ethernet cable and power it with a portable power bank. It did the trick, but it was a pain in the butt. At this point, you got to be asking yourself, John, was it worth it? Hells yeah! Hells yeah! Over the course of five days, working with a couple of hours a day, I managed to migrate my entire house. This includes a little over 80 devices, uh, I think I already said that, and those 30 automations and scenes and schedules. How is that worth it, you ask? Well, let's go there next. As I mentioned at the top of the video, Stringify shutters at the end of June 2019. This means I, we need something else. And so far, I feel I've found a worthy candidate in the Hubitat. I've been able to put all of my automations from Stringify into the, into the Hubitat. Not all of them were super easy to do, but I figured them out. And for the sake of time, we'll make those the subject of a future video. 
After all the sausage grinding of setting up devices was out of the way, I spent a fair amount of time on my dashboards. What I'm showing you here is one that I made for my home PC, and I have other ones for some of my other configurations like mobile devices and my work PC, things like that. So we'll get into dashboards right here. HubAdapt provides a very powerful yet flexible dashboard builder. The builder allows you to pick any device and any attribute of that device to create a widget. For example, on one of my dashboards, I monitor the power usage of my studio using a Zoo's power switch. I simply added the current attribute to the widget, and voila, there it was. It also allows you to define widget specifications like height, width, font size, theme colors, and much, much more. You can even round the corners of your widgets if you want. So let's take a quick look at a couple of the dashboards. First one that I'll show you here is the one for my uh, mobile device. So I have this for the iPhones. And you can see how I just stacked in those icons there. And then I grouped everything by room. And so I have everything here. Now, this actually made it pretty close to the experience on the Wing Hub, um, with the exception that I can group everything by rooms. Um, I can put in these links to other dashboards. So, for example, if I go and say the living room, we just tap on that. That's a special dashboard link that I've created. And this is going to take us into the living room, specific living room dashboard, which will have more devices on it. I can do more finite control, which each of the things that I have in this hub. Um, put in some rarely used stuff, and then I get some of the door sensors and motion sensors down there. And then what I did on each one of the mobile dashboards, I would say the drill down dashboards, is I put a link right back up there at the top to that mobile dashboard. So boom, going to click over. Uh, they're not as fast as I would like, but you know they're they're good enough. And say the master bedroom, we can do the same thing. I did this with essentially every room of the house. The other nice thing is you can put a, a widget or a device in as many rooms as you want. You're not limited to say this device is in this room, so it can only be in that room dashboard. So that's another thing I really like the Hubitat dashboard, and it's super cool. Uh, the other thing I did is I got this rolling on the Kindle Fire. So this is a specific dashboard that I made for the Kindle Fire. And, you know, I don't have everything in here, but you can see those links up here to the mini dashboards or the specific room dashboards. And again, it's all still pretty fast. Uh, I'm not sure if, how well you'll see this. I'm going to click this and that's turning off the studio lights there. And when I want to turn it back on, I just tap it again and those lights come back on again. You have to look at the reflection in the screen there to see how well that worked, but the dashboards are pretty cool. They're an amazing thing to me, and most of your time after you get done with all the setup is going to be spent in the dashboards anyway. Uh, that's one of the reasons that I've heard Hubitat talk about for why they didn't release a mobile app right away is they focused on the dashboards. You can do the dashboards essentially from any web interface. We even have these using, we're even using these on our Samsung uh, smart refrigerator uh, on the screen on that as well. Uh, so I have them all over the place and they're pretty cool. And even though my home PC dashboard is a bit crowded, after a while I was quickly able to adjust to the layout and I could pretty much tell any time what I was looking at. I knew where to go. I can tell where to go on that dashboard to see what I want to see. So again, dashboards, very cool, very powerful. Hubitat also allows you to create what are known as virtual devices. This allows you to amp up the control factor in your home automation. I'll go into the virtual devices in detail in another video. On the rules engine side, you have a lot of options there as well, including rules, triggers, triggered rules, actions, and schedules. So there's a lot of things to choose from here as well. I'll admit there's almost too much here to deal with, but after a little bit of time and research, it all started to make sense. So here's what you get. The initial setup, well, it's a breeze. The only drawback is the lack of the mobile device, which we talked about that's not that big of a deal. Um, you do have the difficulties where you're pairing your devices, and that is kind of a pain in the butt, but you can power through those issues. Was migration a pain in the butt? Yes, but that's because I have so many devices. If you find migration tools for the Wink or SmartThings, please let me know in a comment and we'll go check those out. Now, after everything's inside, when it comes to device information inside the hub, there's a ton of power here as well. For example, when I brought in my Ecobee thermostat, I could see all of the settings that were controllable as well as all of the attributes that I could put into dashboards and widgets. 
I mean, look at these things. I'm looking at max cooling set point. I'm looking at thermostat fan mode, thermostat mode. I mean, everything is here, including a lot of switches up here that I can control it from the device list. All this is pretty cool. And as I mentioned, the Zeus power switch is filled with useful information. I love these little things. I'm looking at the current high and low, energy duration, power in watts, switch position, voltage coming into the switch. This thing is super cool. Now when you first fire up your Hubitat, it's going to be pretty bare bones. So you'll need to add in pre-built apps to enable things like the Amazon Echo, thermostats, groups and scenes, dashboards, and the rules engine. All these can be added in by add, clicking the add built-in app button and you'll get the entire list of what's already there waiting for you. And if you're planning to use Lutron devices, you'll also need to add in the Lutron integrator app. These are super simple to do, so no need to be afraid there. You also have the ability to add in custom device handlers. I had to do this for my Inovelli two-channel smart plugs. It was pretty simple to do. In fact, I found it to be much easier than it was in SmartThings. System logging is also very cool. I found it to be very useful when I was debugging my more complex automations. There's a real-time log. You can watch everything going on in real-time. There's nothing happening right now. And then you can switch in and you can look at your past logs. And this will give you essentially everything that's going on with your logs. And if you click on the info buttons, it's going to take you right to the device that that information was logged about. And again, can't say this enough, super cool. The automation scope on this thing is top notch, albeit it's a bit more complex to learn than it is on the Wink Hub. If you can get over that, then you'll have some serious fun. It's definitely simpler than on the Vera, and depending on how you use your SmartThings, it's either easier or harder. You advanced SmartThings users will know what I mean by that. I expect to make more videos about the Hubitat, so leave questions below. I'll pick the most popular and or interesting for the future videos. As usual, if you're looking for tech support, that is not me. Contact the manufacturer. So in the end, here's what I think. Hubitat is very powerful, and I rank it right up there with SmartThings and Vera. It's not as easy to use as the Wing Cub, but then again, it's far more capable in terms of automation, so a bit more complexity is a bit to be expected. But once I factor in the ease of use, flexibility, speed, stability, local control, the Hubitat is a great choice. I've yet to fully burn it in, but as for now, um, it's a leading hub in my opinion. And for more reviews, tips, and DOI videos, visit azhb.com. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to click like. Over here, there's a couple more videos that you might enjoy. Until next time, cheers. What on Stringify for? <laughs> Your voice is like Ian Pee Wee Herman. Digga, 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 digga.